Hi everybody, it's Kelly from Lock Bear Knits coming to you from a very sunny, very fall like Nova Scotia, Canada. Welcome to all the new and returning viewers. It's so great to have you here. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button down below if you want to be notified of new episodes. And the like button just helps us get the word out about the podcast. And let's dive right in. I don't have a whole lot of time today and that works out fairly well because I don't have a whole lot to show you. <laughs> so I'll put all my social media links down below and this door here is kind of making some noise with the wind so I'm just gonna shut it and uh, then we'll get going. I think that'll work. <laughs> okay, <laughs> the wind was kind of blowing it on either side. Oh no, I just did it. Anyway, let's do it. It's not that noisy. I don't think it'll pick up. So uh, grab your uh, cuppa or glass of <laughs> beverage. I have my lemon thriller tea today because it's chilly and uh, this is like literally my favorite kind of weather. I think it's, I don't know, 15, 16 degrees. We apparently have a hurricane coming our way. Um, although depending on which news site you look at, it's either a category two or will be downgraded to a post-tropical storm. <laughs> So, you know, fingers crossed for the latter, but it is 2020, so, you know. <laughs> On top of that, very sad news, uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg passed away yesterday, I believe, or early this morning. That's, um, that's a wallop. That's really sad. That just, that's what I woke up to this morning and I was like, ah, I should just go back to bed. <laughs> If this is any ind any indication of the day, um, but an incredibly remarkable woman and definitely like a beacon um, for all of us. So, 2020 just keeps on rolling. Anyway, this is a knitting podcast. <laughs> so let's get knitting. Um... So I'm trying to think, like last episode, which would have been two weeks ago, was a parade of foes. And this is uh, all new cast-ons. <laughs> None of which I really had planned when I was uh, talking about it on <laughs> last episode. This is episode 83 or 84. One of those. So um, to start off, both of these patterns are by uh, Anka Strick because I am on an Anka Strick bender. <laughs> uh, so the first one, I'm trying to do this without, um, I should put my glasses on. By the way, I finally broke down and got prescription reading glasses. <laughs> This is the state of my life now. But I couldn't find a pair of reading glasses that were the right strength between like 1.5 and 2.5 because one worked for one eye and it wasn't working for the other eye or it would work close up but it wasn't giving me what I needed kind of a little further away. So it turns out I have an astigmatism in my left eye which is shifted, um, which is why what I was work using wasn't working. And also one eye is stronger than the other eye, even though I still have 20, 20 vision. So I don't even exactly know how that works. Like, is it like 20? I don't know. I don't know how they call it 20, 20 vision. If when, if you can't see clearly <laughs> without reading glasses, I, which I know the reading glasses is just a natural deterioration of the aging of the eye, but yet I still have 20, 20 vision. So I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I can't figure it out, but they come on, I picked them up on October 1 and I cannot wait because they have, they're called home office glasses. So you get like, I think 12 or 18 feet um, and one section, like the top part is kind of for the further away and then the bottom part is for closer up, but it's not like a, it's not like a clear demarcation. It's almost like it blends. So it's not as off-putting, I guess, as natural, like the regular progressives. So I'm very excited <laughs> because I cannot tell you how many pairs of reading glasses, 
like Costco specials I have at home and I have to keep trying to switch them out trying to find the right ones so anyway <laughs> that's my story um but I'll find the front page so I have and I actually have it over there is the Anka Strick the juiced and I don't know if I'm saying that right um two sweater which I have all ready to cast on and I think it takes a provisional cast on which if anybody's watched previous episodes know knows that I absolutely hate the provisional cast on I cannot crochet anything like do anything with a crochet hook to save my life but uh so I kind of set that aside because I thought that's going to take some time and then I'm going to dig out the one crochet hook I have somewhere and so in the meantime I saw this. So this is the Big Love and it's kind of worsted Aran weight. It's a cardigan. It's beautiful. It's so, it looks like so comfy cozy. You can kind of see the collar on it. Like, just look at that. Does that not say hello, Autumn? I've missed you. <laughs> so anyway, I, let me see if there's another photo. Here's some photos here. So, let's show the pattern. But here's some more kind of photos of it. Let's see if I, I don't know if I'm getting those on the screen. I hope I am. Um, so, I am making this and I've started it. And it's, um, what, what yarn did she use? Uh, she used the uh, Little Lopey color, which I think think 109 yards per 50 grams so that's like worsted maybe bordering on Aaron um which is perfect because I have a lot of um Cascade 220 which is sort of worsted slash Aaron weight so this took for I'm gonna do the M2 uh wait now M1 size. So it's got um, extra small, small, medium one, medium two, large, extra large, and extra, extra large. So the um, finished bust circumference goes up to 61.75 inches or 157 centimeters. And they suggest 26 to 36 centimeters or 10.25 to 14.25 inches in positive ease at the bust. Um, so yeah, so I'm doing the M1, which will give me 46.75 inches at the bust or 119 centimeters. Um, so I am using, oh, that was them. I might still need that. <laughs> so I'm using, get out one of the Cascade 220. Trying not to, I don't know my foot stool today, so my feet are dangling and I feel like I can't get like purchase on anything. So this is the, color I'm using. I love it. It's like a, it's a brighter green than the olive. It's called, it's called Ireland. It's 2429, which I'm pretty sure is the, it's called the Ireland Heather, which when you look at the color to me, that's kind of, that reminds me of like an Irish green. <laughs> so anyway, um, but this yarn is uh, 100 grams and it's got 220 yards so it's almost bang on uh, with the Letta Lopi which I think was just one yard shorter. Um, at first I thought I didn't have enough and then I realized after I looked at the yard I think I was looking at the meterage in the pattern but comparing it to the yardage on the yarn or vice versa. And so I was like, I don't know if I'm gonna, I might be like five 
yard shy. And then it turns out, no, because I was just screwing up. I wasn't comparing apples to apples, basically. So you start off at the collar and I haven't got a whole, whole lot done. Do, do, do. Oops, try to get it all out and not pull anything off. So you start off with the provisional cast on, but, <laughs> and now that I know this, um, there we go. Now that I know this, so the provisional cast on, she has a tutorial um, on YouTube, or I'm not sure who does the tutorial, but she's going to link to the tutorial in YouTube that shows you how to do a um, two needle provisional cast on that does not require crochet. So you basically, <laughs> I don't know if this is going to work. You have... If you're doing stocking net stitch, then the back needle, which, okay, let's do it as if this was, <laughs> the back needle is going to be like your active needle. And then the front needle is going to hold the, um, the non in use, uh, stitches. <laughs> That's my very technical term. So you basically kind of hold it the same way you would if you were doing a long tail cast on, and then it's just the way that you would loop, like you loop <laughs> this finger. I think it kind of goes around, no, sorry. <laughs> you know, this makes much more sense <laughs> with needles. So let's try, let's try this. So, and she, they recommend that it, the needle that's going to be holding the um, not in use stitches is a um, interchangeable or you can use like yarn just because then you can kind of put the stoppers on it like I did and it just kind of hangs there without having to deal with like a long um, yarn. No, needle. <laughs> but... Basically what you would do is you kind of, I don't know how the best way to show this is, but you would basically take the yarn. Oh, maybe I can try it this way. <laughs> I don't know if this is going to work. Um, all right. So if I were anchor, so, you know, you kind of hold it like you do for your long tail cast on, but then this thumb would go, I think it's like, you basically, <laughs> this is why I don't do tutorials. Okay, but basically, if you're holding it like this, then this yarn, the yarn on this side is going to kind of go up, like back and over kind of the opposite needle. And then the yarn that you're holding with this finger would sort of kind of do the opposite. So it's almost like you're going like do do do. <laughs> that is that's like the the worst explanation ever. <laughs> but uh, it's it's a really great tutorial. It took me probably about four tries to kind of get. The process down I kept kind of I'd go along and then I I really had to concentrate because if I stopped I'd forget which finger went last and then muck it up <laughs> so but as you can see and I can't remember oh this is the right side so this is the right side and you can kind of see right here is where the cast on the provisional cast on was and you can kind of see the ridge here on the inside um so what you did was you knit a certain number of rows in pattern and then you put those stitches on hold um and then you put your needle through the um live stitches from the provisional cast on and then you start doing the other side so basically this here is going to be like the center of the back collar. Uh, so I haven't gotten much done. 
And I was, this did not take long at all to knit. I did that in just kind of like one sitting. It's like the, not even smaller than a swatch really, which I didn't swatch. Cause I don't like swatching. You know what it is? It's not that I don't like swatching. It's that when I want to start a sweater or a shawl or whatever, I don't, I actually don't, I don't swatch shawls. So if I'm knitting a garment, basically, I don't want to stop and swatch and then block it and then wait. I literally want to dive in right now because I don't like waiting. I want to do what I want to do when I want to do it. <laughs> so, that has not always worked in my favor, but anyway, I think it will. This is like a pretty loose gauge um and i actually was sort of i could have gone either way on the smaller the medium one but i decided if i'm going to be wearing it kind of over maybe something else um that might be a little um not thicker but thicker material than just like a t-shirt or something then i'd probably want a little extra room to move and not feel like jammed in <laughs> jammed in the sweater um so anyway, that's that. And, um, you know, <laughs> you're welcome for the very informative tutorial on the not provisional cast on. Um, but it's a very enjoyable knit so far. It's the, like, I really like her, um, the way she writes her patterns. It's very easy to follow. Um, like, I don't find I get too jammed up or I'm like, I don't really know what she's saying there. And I find even if I'm a little, like, I can't picture what she's saying in my head, I know enough from her, like, other pattern that I did that just go with it and everything will be fine. <laughs> so that's generally what I do. So I used my, I used my, look a interchangeables for the um for the cast on that kind of gets or the portion that sort of gets held um and then i switched over and put the chagos in the live stitches but as i i actually i bought this like i don't know two or three years ago and i I don't even know if I've ever used them, but I was using them to kind of like knit with the first section. Like I did this in the Licka Needles and I kind of didn't want to switch over to the Chiagos and I love my Chiagos, they're my favorite. But um, I really enjoyed knitting with the Licka Needles or Licka or Licka, however you say it, anyway. So um, I'm gonna put a little time in on that this weekend, I believe, hopefully. But the reason that that sort of got put on hold was, oops. But the thing too is, is now that I know the provisional cast on that doesn't need a crochet hook or require me to crochet in any way, shape or form, um, I gotta get my hair to stick behind my thing so I can stop friggin' with it. Um, now I can cast on the just juiced two sweater. Um, but next up, oops, wait, is that the pattern? Yep. Okay. Uh, is another Anka strip pattern. <laughs> and this was one that was in my queue. Um, well, actually, I don't know if I had it in my queue, but anyway, it was in my mental queue. <laughs> that I wanted to do um and it's also it's the juiced cowl so this is ooh, ooh, let me see do it this way so I'm gonna try to get up so let me see if you can see it so it's a long cowl which you can wear long or doubled up I would probably wear it doubled up because I love a nice comfy cowl um, so there is kind of, so 
So that's like perfect for fall and winter. I just absolutely love it. Another picture there. So I kind of went on a stash dive because I thought this is perfect for um, a stash buster. So the yarn, they used a Gilead yarn, which is 250 meters to 73 yards per 100 grams. So it's about a, it's about a DK weight, DK light worsted. Um, so I thought, I kind of went and I was looking at what I had, but I didn't really have a lot of my, um, I don't actually have a lot of DK yarn. Um, and what I do have is like, I'll have one skein of this color, one skein of this color. I did have a sweaters quantity, but I didn't want to dig into that because I want to use that for a sweater. And then what was the other thing I found I had? Oh yeah, I did have another one that I had enough, but it just wasn't the color. I wanted a solid color and I wanted like um, a neutral. So I, so here was my dilemma. Um, a little while ago, maybe two or three years ago, I bought yarn from a yarn dyer and then afterwards realized her, um, what shall we say, politics or um, beliefs did not coincide with mine. Um, but meanwhile, I had four skeins of the yarn from this dyer and I really was on the fence about what to do with it um because i really i really disagreed with her um and the way i think i just really disagreed with her it's a whole thing <laughs> we don't have that kind of time um but i had spent a fair bit of money on the yarn so what i have decided to do is I wanted to double strand the yarn, but I really wanted to use my Illamani Echo Llama in the light gray color. This is so soft. Like I love Illamani. I love all of their uh, lines, but the Echo Llama is my favorite. This is what I made my Puntilla sweater out of that I absolutely love, but I made it in um, kind of a more the medium brown color, I think. Um, but I didn't have enough of this to double strand. Um, and I did have, so I thought, oh, I'll use one of the other colors. So I had enough in like this gorgeous camp color, but I have a sweaters quantity in that. And I really wanted to make a sweater out of it. So then I had kind of like a light, almost like a light tan color that I thought would blend really nice with this, but I only had one skein. So I kind of debated using the one gray skein and then the one tan skein for half of it and then the two gray for the other half, but that just wasn't the, the look that I wanted. So I went diving a little further and I did come up with the yarn that I had had stuck in there and wasn't really sure what to do with. Um, Cause I just don't, I really don't want to support this person to be quite honest. Um, so I'm not going to mention the yarn's name. I'm not going to mention the dyer's name and I'm not going to show the yarn on the screen. Um, but I'm like, I paid cold hard cash for that and it was a fair bit of money. And that's kind of what it came down to. So um, my one thing I do like is that the Illamani yarn is seems to be the dominant color, which is kind of what I wanted 
with a little hint of sort of a brown going through it. So that's what I've got. Um, so I don't know if you can tell. We're in the afternoon <laughs> time now, so the light isn't quite as good in here. So it's, um, it's really kind of making a beautiful color. And I'll see if, so these are kind of, I don't know how well that will show. We'll see if I put it, see if I put it on my sweater. All right. I don't know if you can tell from there. So it's making a very mild marled effect, but just enough to um, give it some interest. So this cowl is so easy to knit. Um, and it was just like, oops, I, I kind of wish I had it on bigger needles just so I could put it, kind of display it more. But the Illamani yarn is so incredibly soft. I can't wait to knit this and get it off the needles and wear it in time for fall, um, which <laughs> according to today's weather is right around the corner. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at on that one. And this sort of took over because I needed something a little um, more mindless to knit on. And this pattern is so um, easy, so intuitive, but it has like enough interest to make the design on it really pretty. So that's kind of what I've been working on. And um, I think I'm okay with my decision about the yarn um, and what to do with it. I kind of go back and forth, but have any, have any of you like run into that issue and what did you do? Because I don't know, it's a bit of an awkward thing. I don't want to have thrown my money away, but I don't want to kind of promote somebody that I just don't feel comfortable doing that. So, I don't know. Tell me what you think. Tell me what you think. <laughs> so that is pretty much, um, all that I have been knitting on lately. I haven't touched my Felici sock. Um, I haven't touched my, what else have I gotten? My sweater hug, which I cast on like what, months and months ago. I cast it on and then set it aside because I still had other sweaters and the needles. I have not blocked the stuff, the foes I had from last, um, last episode. So since the last episode, I'm just going to set that down. <laughs> uh, since the last episode, I ended up, um, we returned to the office, everybody. Well, not everybody. Um, I think one person's coming in like once a week and then one person isn't coming in at all. Um, but we have a small office, so there's only like, I think, six or seven of us in there. Um, so I find <laughs> I literally had to do up an Excel spreadsheet. Now, granted, I don't need much of an excuse to whip out the spreadsheet. <laughs> I will create a spreadsheet for almost anything, but I was finding it really hard to figure out what my schedule was going to be. So, and how I was going to work everything in. So I was getting up at six o'clock in the morning or 6.30 in the morning. And now I'm getting up at 5.30 in the morning. I take the dog for a little bit of an extra long walk than what I was doing because she's now gonna be home alone for uh, the day except for at lunchtime when I come back. But So I get up, walk the dog for about 35, 40 minutes, then kind of come home, shower, and then, um, you know, like get my coffee 
<laughs> I get my coffee and my breakfast and then I would write for about an hour, an hour and a bit. Um, for any new viewers, I also write um, and publish novels aside from my day job in the <laughs> yarn business. Um, so I was doing that for about an hour and a bit and then I would go finish getting ready for work because I didn't want to put my work clothes on and then get dog hair all over them because <laughs> I have a golden retriever. So dog hair, <laughs> it's a daily struggle. Um, so I didn't, uh, so I would do that and then I'd leave the house at, my office is like literally 12 to 13 minute drive from my house. So I'd leave around like 8.30, get to work, come back at lunch, walk the dog again, go back to work, come home, do my workout, try to squeeze in an hour of knitting and then kind of actually spend some time with my husband. <laughs> so so um, I've been doing that for the last couple of weeks with limited success. Um, the morning part seems to be working. And then by the time I get home in the evening, um, trying to fit in a workout and then eating before it's not too late because I also do intermittent fasting. <laughs> so I try to eat by six o'clock so that I don't have to put off breakfast too late in the morning because I'm always really hungry in the morning. Um, so I, uh, <laughs> but I still want to get at least like 45 minutes of a workout in. So yeah, it was just, I don't know. I'm still, I'm still tw <laughs> tweaking it a bit. That is, I don't know. I'm kind of thinking I may, I may do like longer workouts two days through the work week and then the other two longer workouts on Saturday and Sunday when I can do it anytime through the day. I don't know. But I did get a, um, a dye day in as well. I took a day off work and uh, did I take a day off work? Yeah, I took a day off work or it was Labor Day. I forget anyway, <laughs> something. I think I did take the day off work. Um, and then I spent the day dyeing the autumn colors. So I have uh, September Morn, Falling Leaves, and Embers of November ready to go into the shop once I get the pictures taken, which I'm hoping to get done tomorrow. The weather was not cooperating with the picture taking. So um, tomorrow looks good. So I think after we uh, leave the summer house and get back home, I can take the pictures and then get them up in the shop. Uh, and then I still have uh, more colorways coming. I just have to figure out my timing for them and do it that way. And that is about all that's going on. Um, just kind of the return to work, trying to um, whip my butt back in shape after the uh, pandemic sloth. And uh, that's about it. So I will let you guys go. Um, I'm gonna go do some knitting. And I think we're going to take the dog out for a walk on the trail that's nearby because it is a beautiful day to be outside. And I will check back with you guys in a couple of weeks. And until then, happy knitting and I will see you guys later. Bye.